Shalin Ammon, head of design of, at Uber, and he will be sharing uh, how it's not the about shipping those products, but about moving the experience forward. So Shalin, welcome on stage. Thanks. Thanks, man. All right, is this thing on? Cool. Um, I'm gonna have my presenter notes because I'm a rookie at this, and so hopefully I can click and look at my notes at the same time. Um, so yeah, my talk today is about not shipping products, but moving the experience forward. Uh, a little bit about me. So I thought off. Um, so I thought I'd start off and share a bit about me. Um, some quick facts. I've lived in 15 different cities, uh, 10 countries, and five continents before I found my home here in San Francisco. Um, all that traveling has given me a unique perspective. Um, I find myself constantly adapting and reinventing myself uh, based on where I lived. Uh, how I interacted with the people in London was very different than how I interacted with people in the South. Right? Uh, this reinvention allows me to stay relevant, um, and adaption uh, to new situations helps me grow as a designer. So I was creative in high school, uh, loved art, but didn't really see it as a career. Uh, when I was accepted into college, I decided to major in pre-med. Uh, clearly, that didn't last very long. Kind of flunked out of that one. Um, sorry. Yes, it was a career. Uh, I went to North Carolina State in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, they have an amazing, amazing design program, but I didn't go there for design. Uh, I ended up exploring many majors. Uh, and for four years, I searched. So from pre-med to finance to philosophy to law to accounting, you name it, I was truly lost. So I decided to travel. Uh, and the thing about traveling is you never, you never know what, what can happen, right? You'll never know what you can learn or see or experience. Um, I made no plans, and the only plan was to be consumed by the people uh, and the environment. It's hard not to be inspired when you're traveling. Um, did I skip something? There you go. Sorry. Um, and then I found design again, right? Uh, this time for my roommate in Sydney. Uh, I find myself playing with Flash and ActionScript um, about 20 hours a day. Uh, I was learning the ins and outs, uh, dissecting others' works, and I was consumed by it. Um, I spent all my time learning it. Like a gamer, it was kind of like an addiction, right? Um, but like any new sport or hobby, I was really terrible at it. Um, so I decided to go back to school. Um, I finished my last semester at State. And in my spare time, I was creating a site for my friend's dad. Um, I, let us, I spent a lot of time at Barnes and Nobles um, reading, um, but I could only learn so much through books, right? So I decided to go to art school and learn the tools and the fundamentals of design. Um, and the choice was simple, really. It was the only school that didn't require a portfolio, uh, so that I chose the Academy of Art. <laughs> um, I spent about 16 hours a day, including weekends, immersing myself in design. Um, and I had a lot of catching up to do. Um, I was eating, drinking, dreaming design all the time. Uh, surfing sites, replicating designs by Tolson and Method and Organic and Too Advanced and looking at com arts. Um, and that's probably going to start dating myself, but um, you know, that's, that's my age. I'm pretty old. Um, so even when I was learning, I was still struggling, um, not taking my design concepts far enough, um, or not being able to be as creative as others, um, and not knowing the tools well enough. Right? Uh, at school, I learned to be OK with failure as long as I kept on, kept on practicing. Um, but my main goal was to never go back to North Carolina. Um, in my final years, I applied as, uh, to countless agencies, um, uh, including IDEO, Method. Everyone said no, and I felt pretty defeated by that. Uh, and then one firm said maybe, um, a small firm that no one had heard of. So I think I skipped the slide again. Uh, I spent almost four years there, um, turning a print agency into a web practice. Um, I may have, probably didn't get paid much, uh, but it, she gave me every opportunity to like, learn and take risks and challenges. Um, and so I was able to extend my education into real world experiences. Um, she required me to be self-motivated uh, and continue to learn independently. So the next phase of my life uh, took me to advertising. It taught me that I hate advertising. Um, not the creative campaigns that you see for Volkswagen or the interactive experiences for Sony, but like really like the, the buttons and the banner ads and the coupons and the promos and the A-B clicks, um, A-B testing. Um, otherwise known as marketing, right? Um, this was the first and last time I ever let, I would ever go to an advertising agency. The next step was Hot Studio, right? Um, Hot Studio taught me user-centered design, uh, the design process, design thinking, design facilitation, and to ask why, 
what problems are we solving for? What if, and how can we reimagine something? Um, how can we make it better for the user? Um, that was a new concept for me. For, for a long time in school, it's just about making things look pretty. Um, but really understanding, you know, the real thing about design is, is what are we trying to solve for, right? Um, at the time, I was a visual designer, but I wanted to expand my skill sets in, in UX. Um, and Maria, CEO at the time, uh, forced me to pick one. She said, you can either be a UX person or a visual. Um, I didn't care as long as I got to pick and observe the process. I thought I could learn. Uh, so I moved to New York City and opened up Hot New York City, uh, or helped grow Hot New York City. Uh, I basically got to open a, an agency on someone else's dime, which was pretty awesome, right? Um, and it's a city I've always wanted to experience. Um, basically, it was all risk. It was no risk and all, all new skills, right? Um, we grew the practice from about three people to 15, uh, but something was off. I kind of felt, started getting comfortable, and I started feeling like I wasn't challenged enough, and I wasn't, wasn't growing, and I finally realized that I wasn't, um, I wasn't failing enough, right? So I decided as, as consultants, we kind of go wide. Uh, but we don't go very deep. Um, and it's the nature of consulting, right? Most products come back differently. The collaboration stops and decisions get made. Um, and it morphs into something different, different than your original vision, right? So I wondered if I could take the process that helped organizations innovate and do that for my own startup, right? Um, and so I started traveling, and I found this idea again. Um, I'm not going to talk about the idea, because it's somewhere in internet land. Um, but I spent a year of my life building it, right? Understanding how to develop, how developers work, and how um, iOS works, and how, um, how to build and shape a product. Those are really hard, difficult tasks, and figuring out, like, what are the things that users actually want? Um, there are plenty of le lessons and plenty of failures, um, but that's, that's another presentation, right? After a year, I find myself running out of funding. Um, so I applied to the designer fund, right, and asked around about 500 startups. Um, was asked to pitch for the designer fund, and a few more people uh, that I approached uh, were on the 500 startups mentors list, right? Um, and what I learned from, from that process was that funding is 50% of the idea, 50% of the team, 50% of the experience, and 50% heart, right? And some of, you, as some of you may know, it's about 200% of your time and energy. Uh, while I ultimately didn't get funding, it became apparent that I needed to, to go work at a startup uh, and build a product for a well-known organization. Um, and I needed to have a great story to convince, convince investors um, and basically build a great successful track record of building products. Um, so I connected with a mentor for 500 startups um, and was asked to name five companies that I'd want to go work for. Uh, maybe gain some insight around funding, uh, but also help them with a product idea, right? Maybe a small little concept. Um, so my requirements and criteria was that, you know, the company had to be mobile first. Um, they'd have to have established market fit because I didn't want to go through that again. Um, I kind of briefly mentioned Square, Hotels Tonight, Get Karma, Airbnb, and Uber, right? Um, and all these companies really, the, the one thing that they all had going for themselves was um, that they were all design focused. The only one that wasn't really design focused was, was Uber at the time, right? Um, so the first call I got fra, that I got was from Travis, the CEO of Uber. Uh, and the conversation started by jumping into my past experience, my portfolio, and asking some really tough questions around the design decision process, right? He's a really smart guy. He, he may be a CEO with an engineering background, but he really understands experiences, and he started asking questions around the flaws of, just, he started noticing things that I just never paid attention to in, in design. Um, and so immediately I kind of found him having a sense of design knowledge that most CEOs didn't have, right? Um, at the time I was in SF and about to catch a flight to New York, uh, he told me to hold tight. He's like, I'll call you with the details, but we're putting something together. Um, may need you to fly back tomorrow for a meeting here at 9 a.m. Uh, for the kickoff. I was like, okay, cool. Um, so I walked into my apartment and I uh, got an email to fly back for the 9 a.m. kickoff. I didn't even unpack. I basically walked right back out the door and um, to catch a flight back to San Francisco. Um, didn't know what to expect and I didn't know who was going to be there. Um, so the directive was three things, right? It was basically reimagine the Uber app, differentiate the product from competitors. Uh, at the time, you know, we were seeing certain people kind of take the same UI and elements and really wanting us to differentiate the power of like, the engineers that are at Uber and applying that to design aesthetics uh, and provide a way for users to choose multiple vehicle options, right? Uh, we had just launched Taxi in Chicago and we were about to split Uber Black and Uber SUV into two different options, right? Uh, and we had three weeks to do this. So it was Travis, L, uh, Casey, and myself. Uh, Travis Kalanick is the CEO. 
El Luna is a former IDEO consultant, and I was a consultant. So uh, there were lots of stakeholders. There was product, engineering, ops teams, clients, drivers. Uh, and El and I were to lead the process having regular check-ins with the team. Um, initially, the engagement was for three weeks uh, to help re redefine the experience, right? Uh, and since we weren't an agency, we, there was no need to formally or heavily document. Um, we kind of took what was useful from the agency um, process and lost the formality. So we locked ourselves into a room uh, with Travis for two days, started by framing the brainstorming meeting, talking about, like, let's keep it collaborative. You know, there are no bad ideas. Uh, and don't think about implementation. A lot of times when we go into a brainstorming meeting, there's always engineers that are like, well, how are we going to build it? You know, as soon as that stuff happens, stop it. Because at brainstorms, it's all about the larger, bigger ideas. It's, it's the blue sky approach, right? Uh, so we started with lots of questions and just listening. Uh, we went wide and looked at the bigger picture. We looked at customer journeys. Uh, what worked, what didn't, uh, what were the big wins. Um, we did research, we audited multiple uh, companies, uh, reviewed support tickets, um, performed ethno guerrilla research with our friends and family, um, conducted stakeholder interviews with you know, the ops teams, uh, and determined product principles. I think product principles are, is something that often gets overlooked, um, but it's important to kind of map that to everything that you're building on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Um, we did lots of sketches, loose presentations, collected feedback, uh, and we finally aligned on goals, right? Um, most of the projects that we have at Uber, when we don't align around goals and what everybody's working towards, that's when we run into a lot of problems, right? Um, so Elle, Elle left to work on Mailbox, um, and I came on board to complete the project and launch it. Um, it took nine months to complete, right? Uh, two months was spent in my house because the office was too distracting, uh, and it was basically a team of 10 people, right? Um, Looking back on it, we remember the engagement was initially for three weeks. Um, that's how long we thought, that's how long Travis, I think, imagined it would take to kind of redefine that entire experience from end to end, right? It's a, it's a pretty simple product. We don't want people to be engaging with, with Uber all the time. It's, it's the other stuff that kind of plays a larger part. So understanding the design process, right? You can talk about the process, but no, one was, no one's ever going to get it until you go through it. Um, I'm going to use Julie's war metaphor a little bit, but it's, it's kind of like war. You see it in the movies, on TV, and you read about it in stories, but, but when you're in the trenches, it's game-changing shit. Like, you're, you're never going to know what it's like to go to war, right? Um, and you're never going to know what the design process is until you actually experience it for the first time. So it's, it's more than making something look good. It's a process. Uh, it can be designed. It can be by design, or it can be accidental, right? Uh, some industries have been using design um, since the beginning, right? So architecture, you don't start with engineers and say, let's make a building that's 20 foot tall, like, let's, let's go to the architect first, right? And I think we're seeing a shift in business where we're starting to understand the value of design. Um, so why, why is design, design process important, right? Because design is becoming a commodity, right? Anybody can make things look pretty. Um, we want to differentiate our product, right? We want to extend our brand values and have a competitive advantage. Um, I can't emphasize this enough. Our engineers are some of the best that I've actually ever worked with. Um, the culture and values align perfectly with design. Uh, they're able to balance functional with emotional. Um, you know, the concept of like cars moving on a map, like to most engineers, I, I, had, a, I had assumed that when I told the idea of like, let's have cars move on a map, they would have been like, that makes no fucking sense. Like, why would we spend that much time doing that? The engineers at Uber are just like, well, we see the value from a functional perspective, but also a product differentiation, right? It was an opportunity for them to flex their engineering muscles around um, doing something that nobody else had ever done before, right? And it was a simple little thing that, in my mind, but it took about eight months to engineer, right? Um, and then when we built it, it's, that was, I think that was the one thing that people just really raved about. It was just like, holy shit, there's cars moving on a map. Like, that's amazing. Um, so when, when an idea is proposed, they look at me and say, you know, this is going to be difficult, or we have no idea, but they're always like, let's figure it out together. Let's figure out how we can get this done. Um, so we took, 18 months ago, we took a traditional top-down approach, right? It was product, design, engineering, uh, product on the vision, and the team was measured by how often they shipped, right? Uh, it was the concept of, like, shipping it and then always fixing it later. But the problem's is that with many startups, it's, it's a resource-constrained company, right? It's, we're not able to go back and iterate. There's so many other products that we need to build to kind of scale effectively. Um, 
So today, we, we want to kind of change that process, right? We, we looked at what we did with the launch of the iOS app, and we basically said, let's try to replicate that experience. Because in that experience, design had a good time. You know, the engineers loved the process. Um, at the end of the day, we shipped something really amazing and beautiful, right? Um, and so we we're trying to replicate that process through and through. Um, so we, we don't have a problem shipping at Uber, right? We, sh we just want to make sure that what we ship is the is right experience, it, that it's Uber. Um, mobile ships every two weeks, right? Um, but in those two weeks, they focus on quality and moving the experience forward constantly. Uh, there's a larger collaborative uh, discovery process uh, involving engineering, design, and product. Um, and failure is OK and encouraged. And it's built into the process, right? Um, so we've had failure before, right? We, we built a version of FairSplit um, that never saw the day, light of day, um, thank god. It was all about um, you know, splitting, splitting a fair with four or five other people and basically sharing a code. So somebody would say, OK, I'm going to split a fair, enter this code into your iOS device. And it just felt a little janky. It was just like, it just didn't feel Uber, right? Um, and the thing about Uber is it's, it's just very frictionless. It's, don't, don't make the user think about the process. Uh, so we trashed it, right? And it's, it's very hard to imagine developers trashing you know, something that they've spent so much time building. It's very hard for developers to kind of let go. It's hard for designers to let go. But ultimately, when we looked at it, it just didn't feel Uber. Um, so you can imagine putting something, um, imagine something in, sorry, I'm going to start over. You can imagine uh, putting something on paper and say, fuck yeah, that makes sense, right? Like, uh, but when you build it and play with it, you have to have the guts to say, God, that's really, that's just not right. Uh, so you can iterate your way out of the, you can iterate your way out of fundamental flawed experiences. Um, I don't think you can. I think you have, you basically have to pivot. Um, so every project is different for us. Um, some have deadlines, some have small experience updates, some are um, projects with larger refreshes. Um, and this is very much uh, a process that's in progress at Uber, right? Um, so. Our sprint planning looks like this. Um, it's, two it's broken up into two weeks and six weeks, right? The first two weeks of the sprint, we go through the discovery process. Uh, we pair engineers, designers, products, product people, and we go wide, but we don't go very deep. Uh, and the last phase is about executing based on the learnings from the discovery. Uh, this is where we get to innovate, right? This is where we, get, we build in failure into the process. Uh, and this is where we kind of come up with the aha moments, right? This is where we just we build and we play. Um, we go blue sky, remember deferred judgments, right? Don't think about implementation and brainstorm, um, and brainstorm as many ideas as you can. Um, some activities include researching, obviously understanding customer needs and wants, doing audits, validating assumptions and problems uh, that we're solving for, doing sketches, uh, building prototypes, uh, and determining flows and wireframes. Um, and then at the end of the discovery process, we present our findings um, and are able to define requirements and scope uh, for the execution phase, right? Before, we used to define requirements and scope before understanding what the real problem was. Today, I think, after discovery, we kind of get to play, we get to fail, we get to understand how long something will take to, to build. Um, and that's when we can start discovering uh, what the requirements and scope are going to be. Uh, and so just like the name states, just like the name states, uh, we dive in and start getting more granular with our designs, right? And we start prototyping and start to expand on the direction. Um, we, align, we align ourselves uh, around shared vision, goals. We start communicating and building teams. Um, I'm lost right now. <laughs> OK. Sorry. Uh, we aim for blue sky and then whittle down. Uh, designers always want the best user experience. Uh, develop, developers want to ship the best code. Uh, and products, product managers want to get it out as soon as possible, right? But what if our values are based um, on moving experiences forward, then we kind of have alignment, right? Um, at Uber, oh man. <laughs> at Uber, we believe in uh, that it takes a team to define the vision, right? We believe that we believe in collaboration. Uh, we believe that designers need to work next to engineers and product, and we believe that working closely with each other is the only way to move the experience forward. So thank you. <laughs>